The Wake Up Rule. It's 6.30 a.m. Alex wakes up before his alarm. Not because he's a morning person, but because he started treating his brain like it actually matters. He doesn't reach for his phone, doesn't scroll, doesn't check who texted him at 2 a.m. Instead, he starts his morning with five small habits, ones that look simple but completely rewire his brain over time. He wakes up at the same time every morning, no exceptions, weekdays, weekends, 6.30 a.m. Sharp. Why? Because when you wake up at the same time, your brain learns what daytime is. It locks in your circadian rhythm, which is your body's internal clock. Consistent rhythm equals better sleep. Better sleep equals better brain. This is the foundation. Everything else stacks on top. The water trigger. One glass, right after waking up, Alex heads to the kitchen. No coffee yet, just cold water. His brain's been running all night without fuel. Even a little dehydration slows it down. Memory, attention, all of it. One glass reboots the system. Fast, clean, essential. Why? Because right after waking up, your body naturally produces cortisol, which is a hormone that helps you feel alert. Drinking coffee too early weakens that cortisol response and makes you build tolerance faster. In other words, you get less of a boost and need more caffeine later. So Alex gives his brain what it actually needs first. Water to rehydrate and wake up naturally. He drinks it like it's brain juice because it is. The sunlight signal. Light equals wake up. At 6.45 a.m., Alex steps onto the balcony. Cloudy or sunny, it doesn't matter. The light still works. Five minutes of morning sunlight boosts serotonin, regulates melatonin, lowers cortisol, and sharpens alertness. It's nature's caffeine. Without the crash, Alex doesn't question it anymore. He just lets the light hit his face and starts breathing deeper. His brain already feels lighter. The 10-minute quiet zone. It's 6.55 a.m. No music, no news, no notifications, just silence. Alex sits on the floor, back straight, eyes closed, breathing slow. He's not trying to be a monk. He's just watching his thoughts pass, like clouds. This is how he trains his prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that controls focus, decision-making, and emotional response. It's not about clearing the mind. It's about noticing the mind. Ten minutes of stillness, and he's already ahead of 90% of the world. The micro-workout. Movement equals brain on. Alex doesn't need the gym. At 7.05 a.m. he stretches, does a few squats, walks around the block. Anything to get his blood flowing. Why? Because even light movement increases blood flow to the brain and triggers the release of BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF boosts learning, memory, mood, and neuroplasticity. He's not working out for abs. He's moving to activate the machine that runs everything. His mind. The cold reset. Cold water, sharp mind. At 7.20 a.m. after his micro-workout, Alex heads straight to the shower. But not a hot one. It's cold. Uncomfortably cold. Why? Because cold exposure activates norepinephrine, a brain chemical linked to alertness, focus, and better mood. It also reduces inflammation, lowers cortisol, and triggers the sympathetic nervous system, which wakes up the body fast. The first 10 seconds suck, but by the end, Alex feels electric. Not jittery, not tired, just locked in. The big three rule, not everything matters, but these three things do. It's already 7.45 a.m. Alex opens his notebook. He doesn't write a long to-do list. He writes down three high-impact tasks, the ones that actually move his goals forward. Then he circles the hardest one and starts with that. Why? Because your brain is at peak focus and energy in the first few hours of the day. Use it on shallow tasks and you waste your best window. Alex doesn't check emails. He doesn't clean his desktop. He goes straight into the deep work. Because the first win sets the tone. The deep work sprint. Timer on. Distractions off. Brain in. It's 8 a.m. Alex sets a 90-minute timer. No social media. No notifications. No tab hopping. Just him and his most demanding task. This is how the brain hits flow state, which is a mental zone where focus, creativity, and problem-solving spike. Top performers use it. Alex just learned to protect it. One sprint, then a break. The brain-focused breakfast. Alex didn't eat first thing this morning. On purpose. He waited. Why? Because staying in a fasted state after waking up keeps his norepinephrine levels high. Eating early would have slowed him down, shifted blood flow to digestion, and blunted that natural brain boost. So instead, he powered through his most important task first. Then, with his deep work done, now it's time to eat. 
but not to feel full, but to fuel his mind. At 9.30 a.m., he makes a light, clean breakfast, a couple of boiled eggs, half an avocado, a handful of blueberries, sometimes a small piece of dark chocolate if he feels like it. No sugar crash, no food coma, just steady energy. He's not eating for comfort. He's eating for clarity, nutrients, and long-term focus. Protein for neurotransmitters, healthy fats for brain structure, and antioxidants to fight stress. It's not a feast. It's a formula. The Reset Walk. Move the body. Unlock the mind. At 10 a.m., Alex closes his laptop. Not to scroll. Not to crash. But to walk. No headphones. No calls. Just 30 minutes of light movement. This activates the default mode network, which is the brain's background system that powers creativity, problem solving, and mental clarity. It's not a break. It's mental processing. This is when ideas that didn't click an hour ago suddenly do. Einstein walked. Steve Jobs held walking meetings. Alex? He's walking his way through the next breakthrough. The lighter work block. Shift gears. Stay sharp. It's 10.30 a.m. Alex gets back to work. But this isn't deep focus time anymore. It's lighter thinking. He knocks out emails, follows up on tasks and reviews notes or plans for the next project. He's still productive, but without forcing intensity. Because your brain isn't meant to sprint all day. It's meant to cycle. And now he's riding the rhythm. The light smart lunch. Don't eat to shut down. Eat to stay sharp. By 12.30 p.m., you'd think Alex is ready for a heavy lunch. He's earned it, right? But no, he doesn't go near greasy takeout, giant sandwiches, or anything that puts his brain to sleep. Heavy meals trigger a big release of insulin. That shifts blood flow away from the brain and toward the digestive system. The result? Mental fog, slowed reaction time, and a drop in focus. The science is simple. When digestion goes into overdrive, cognitive performance drops. You feel tired, not fueled. So instead, Alex keeps it clean and clear. Grilled salmon, a bowl of greens, a little quinoa, some olive oil. Protein for steady energy, healthy fats for brain structure, and slow carbs to avoid blood sugar spikes. He eats light, not to feel empty, but to stay alert. Lunch doesn't knock him out. It carries him through the second half of the day. The post-lunch reset. Walk it off. Literally. It's 1.30 p.m. Alex doesn't jump straight back into work after eating. He takes a slow 15-minute walk. No phone. No agenda. Just movement to help digestion and keep his brain oxygenated. It keeps him out of the crash zone and makes space for what's next. The power nap. 30 minutes equals brain reboot. At 2 p.m., lights off, timer on. Alex lies down and closes his eyes. Not to sleep for hours, but just to shut the system down briefly. Science calls this a stage 2 nap. 15 to 30 minutes of light sleep that improves alertness, memory, and mood without grogginess. It's not laziness, it's mental maintenance. By 2.30, he's sharper than before lunch. The second work sprint. It's 2.30 p.m. and Alex's brain isn't as sharp as it was this morning. And that's normal. By mid-afternoon, mental energy dips. Your prefrontal cortex starts to slow down. That's why decisions feel harder, why multitasking gets worse, and why people make more mistakes. But Alex doesn't force deep work here. Instead, he shifts to medium-focused tasks, ones that still matter but don't demand full intensity. Things like reviewing feedback, creative planning, writing outlines instead of final drafts, thinking through strategy, not executing detail. He sets a 60-minute timer, works in focused bursts, then takes a short break, maybe five minutes of stretching or water. Then he repeats, another 60, then done. This rhythm works because it matches how the brain operates after cognitive fatigue sets in. Shorter intervals, lower resistance, and more breaks. He's not trying to crush it. He's trying to keep momentum without frying his brain. And it works. No burnout. No blank stares. No, why did I open this tab again? Just consistent, thoughtful progress. The kind that actually moves things forward. The curiosity hour. It's 5.30 p.m. By now, Alex is done with serious thinking. But he's not done using his brain. So he opens a book or a podcast or YouTube. But it's not self-help, not business, not productivity. It's just something he's genuinely curious about. History, space, why flamingos are pink. No goal, no quiz, just curiosity. And that's exactly the point. Studies show that curiosity activates the brain's reward system, especially the dopaminergic circuits linked to pleasure, motivation, and memory. When you're curious, your brain retains information better. Not just about the topic you're interested in, but even unrelated things you learn around the same time. That means this 
habit doesn't just entertain Alex. It builds mental agility, expands his knowledge, and strengthens memory, all while feeling effortless. He calls it learning without pressure. But what it really is, is mental training in disguise. Dinner. It's 6.30 p.m. By this time, Alex is starting to downshift. Dinner isn't a reward for working hard. It's a tool to help his brain recover, not speed up. He keeps it simple. Lean protein, roasted veggies, maybe a bit of sweet potato or brown rice. Nothing greasy, nothing massive, because heavy meals at night come with a cost. Late night eating, especially if the meal is rich in fats or simple carbs can suppress melatonin production, which is the hormone your brain releases to make you sleepy. It also raises core body temperature, which delays deep sleep, known as the stage where your brain clears toxins, repairs neurons, and stores memories. In short, a big dinner equals more digestion and less regeneration. So so Alex eats early and light, just enough to support recovery, not performance. It's not about being strict. It's about setting up his brain to win while he sleeps. The reading ritual. Off screens. Onto paper. Dinner's done. No more task. No more noise. At 7.15 p.m., Alex dims the lights and picks up a book. Not to get ahead. Not to optimize. Just to slow his brain down. To shift from high performance into low power mode. Reading a physical book. Not an article. Not a Kindle. Not a thread on Twitter. Does something different to the brain. It activates deep focus networks, reduces cortisol, and promotes alpha brain waves. Unlike scrolling, it doesn't flood your system with dopamine spikes. It trains attention instead of fracturing it. Research from the University of Sussex even found that reading can reduce stress by up to 68%. More than music, tea, or a walk. Alex doesn't aim to read for an hour. He just goes for 10 pages. That's enough to quiet the noise. Enough to return to stillness. He's not trying to finish the book. He's trying to reset the mind. One page at a time. The gratitude reset. It's 8 p.m. and the day's almost over. But Alex isn't done training his brain. He opens a small notebook. No pressure, no overthinking, just one quiet question. What went right today? He writes down three things. Something that made him smile, something he appreciated, and something that simply worked out. It's not forced positivity. It's rewiring his lens. Practicing gratitude consistently reduces cortisol, boosts serotonin, and trains the brain's reticular activating system, which is the filter that decides what you notice. Most brains are wired to scan for threats. Gratitude teaches the brain to scan for what good instead. Over time, this one habit changes how Alex experiences life. Not by changing the world, but by changing what his brain sees in it. The tech shutdown. No scrolling. No stimulation. Just quiet. At 9 p.m., Alex puts his phone on airplane mode. No emails. No breaking news. No TikTok loop. Blue light blocks melatonin. Stimulation blocks rest. So he shuts it down early to give his brain space to land. The sleep protocol. It's 9.30 p.m. The lights are low. The phone is off and the room is cool and quiet. On purpose. Alex doesn't treat sleep like a leftover. He treats it like the final rep in his brain training routine. He aims for 7 to 8 hours. Not as a luxury, but as a non-negotiable. Because sleep isn't just rest. It's regeneration. This is when his brain clears out toxins through the glymphatic system. Strengthens memory by consolidating learning. Builds new neural pathways and balances mood and emotional control. Research shows that chronic sleep loss shrinks the prefrontal cortex, increases stress hormones, and slows down everything including focus, memory, and decision-making. In other words, every other habit depends on this one. No walk, no deep work, no food choice or gratitude practice will stick if your brain is sleep-deprived. So Alex protects his nights. Because tomorrow's clarity, it starts tonight. More videos like this one are coming up soon. Subscribe and stay tuned.